Hello and good evening. I am very happy to present you this evening with my very special guest. She's a long time colleague and friend, Miriam Peretz, a wonderful, beautiful dancer, choreographer. And uh, I've followed her journey as a dancer, as a choreographer, and the way she developed her own style, her own theme. And I'm really, really happy to see you this evening, Miriam. And uh, if, if, instead of me presenting you, I'd love it if you just tell the audience who you are and what you do. Thank you for hosting me, Yael, dear. So good to see you as well. And um, before anything, I just want to say happy International Women's Day. It's um, such an honor to speak in this on this topic on this day. Um, so my lifelong journey has been um, one of dance and devotion and how dance and devotion um, weave together. And my name, Miriam, uh, my mother, my beloved mother, gave me my name with, um, I think, some prophetic vision because she felt I was dancing already in her womb. <laughs> and when I was born, I was dancing all the time. I was like moving my arms and, and my legs. And she said, this is a dancing spirit. And she named me Miriam um, after Miriam in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament who was Moses' sister and who led the Israelites through dance and through drum, through the Red Sea, um, to freedom. Yes. And um, there's so much in that story, but I really feel my whole life journey and calling has been that, has been how do we um, use dance to journey our way to freedom? And it's especially relevant um, in this time and on International Women's Day because dance is the embodied spiritual practice that is a gift of women from old times. It's all, if we look at all indigenous practices, women were central and are central to spiritual practice through the body. So um, this is my lifelong journey. Uh, I was born in Israel, Palestine, and then um, raised in California mostly, but I've gone back and forth uh, my whole life, so I really have two homes. And really, I have many homes all over the, the world. Um, I arrive in Turkey, and I'm at home. I arrive in um, Spain, and I'm at home. So I have many homes, and I have decided that wherever I dance is a home. <laughs> I just came from Hawaii, and Hawaii is another home. Yes. Oh, I saw that. I was very, very envious, I must say. So um, when I met you, I met you over 20 years ago uh, in Arabesque in Jerusalem. And um, I, oh, we, I was it was my second year as a, as a belly dancer. And I don't know what, what it was yours, but you were, I, I think uh, my eye, I was looking at the, um, at the group of, of women dancing there and I could see that there was something special about the way you moved. And um, I know that you, it, when you, you trained in many, in very many uh, uh, practices of dance. It's not only in styles of dance. It's not only, uh, I met you, as a belly dancer, as ethnic or oriental dancer, as we like to call it, but uh, I think uh, you had you you have a history a history with that, don't you? Um, well, so since childhood, I have studied so many forms of dance, um, and actually, my first uh, love was Hawaiian and Tahitian dance when mm -hmm. I was a young preteen, and um, then I got really involved in African dance, West African, and then African diaspora dances, Afro-Cuban, Afro-Haitian, um, and all along that journey, contemporary dance was also very much um, kind of woven in. So pretty much every night of the week, I was in a studio practicing a different form of movement. Um, during high school, I got really into Middle Eastern dance, belly dance, oriental dance. Um, and I think when you met me, um, 
probably all of the other dance practices had already integrated into, yes. into my body and into my movement. Um, and about the same time that I got interested in um, Middle Eastern dance, I also um, started studying Central Asian dance. Mm -hmm. And eventually I kind of understood that Central Asian dance was more my, my calling. Um, and as a, an ethnic form or a world dance form, it felt more um, aligned for me as a practice, especially as a performing artist. Um, I have a lot of modesty issues. So for me, Oriental dance, I never quite could uh, yeah. work costuming, um, but I still, I love it. And I really, really love um, Oriental dance in living rooms with women, especially. That's my favorite henna parties and um, having Moroccan roots. I've always loved Moroccan dance, um, shikhat dance. Yeah. But I think that, um, yeah, Central Asian dance and Persian and Central Asian dance always kind of came into everything I did and um, the Middle Eastern dance that I taught had already I think been very influenced by Persian and Central Asian dance as well as my contemporary dance as well as all the other practices. So I have been kind of a cultural ambassador in a way and I've also been one of those people that breaks all of the rules and kind of goes against everything and I'm not going to do things exactly this way but I really have come into um, branding my own forms of dance and that has been um, a very important path for me is speaking my own unique dance language that's also in alignment with my spiritual practice so i remember um i, I think it was your master's degree that uh, you you did something about the gypsies was it the, the romani the romani people that was actually my my ba my bachelor's ah, that was your ba okay uh, and it feels feels so long ago that if you ask me to speak about that it might be difficult i can no, say no, i'm my... not asking i'm just i just remember because uh i think i read it i think i either you either published it somewhere or and it rather if i i, I used to to give lectures about the the, the origins of uh, middle eastern dance and the influences so i i relied heavily on on some of your articles or, or whatever you wrote uh for, and thank you for that, and uh, for Romani dance. And then, then I, I explored it uh, further. But uh, you know, when I when I started, uh, internet was very, we didn't have that much uh, information. When when I started uh, belly dancing, Oriental dance, and I was interested, there was you couldn't find any material. And I think when you did that, when you explored the Romani dance, you actually traveled. And, and you followed them around the world, didn't you? I definitely, um, a lot of my studies was was ground studies and you know going, going to Egypt, um, going to Spain um, and going to Turkey, going to many places and learning kind of um, in that way from people and then integrating that with the book sources. And my, the my thesis of my BA was an integration of that, of like field work and um, book study on the Romani people and, um, and that path. And I should go back and reread it. Thank you for reminding me of, <laughs> yeah. of that. Like I have amnesia to my past and like art, like passing my master's program was so intense for me um, that I'm like, that's where my mind is, is right now. Um, so what, what was your master's? Remind me. So, uh, yeah, I did my master's at um, Mills College right here in Oakland. And I was really specifically interested in working with the theme of death and working with the theme of uh, impermanence through through dance through physical embodiment and my whole two years was this incredibly deep inquiry to how how do we embody death how do we um how do we kind of walk through our lives and dance through our lives with with the knowing of the impermanence of this physical form um and layered into that was also a lot of inquiry about um interfaith practices and how um i feel very much um I feel like I am an interfaith dancer and I'm very interested in the intersection of specifically um, the Jewish, the Muslim and the Christian traditions, the Abrahamic faiths coming um, from Israel, Palestine. I feel like that is really um, a calling for me. Um, and the my thesis piece was, it, it was called Luminous Darkness. And um, we really explored human origins coming from the womb and then returning to the earth 
and coming from darkness, returning to darkness. The music that was composed was incredible and the words were about um, the compassionate one. Um, and looking at the word for compassion in Arabic and in Hebrew being rechem, rahman, rachamim, um, yeah. the same word for, for the womb is the same word for compassion. Um, so we had beautiful overlapping um, vocals in Arabic and Farsi and Hebrew. Um, so the interfaith themes were, were woven in um, to the piece and definitely the exploration of, of death and um, death and rebirth as well. Wow. Okay. So, um, Lem, will you tell us a little about Nava dance? Because, and why did you call it Nava? And when you, I, I know, I know the translation of the world, the word, because it's in Hebrew, but will you please explain what is Nava dance and why you called it like this and uh, how it developed? Yes. So um, in my long uh, searching for dance vocabulary, for the language of my soul, really, um, what I found is that I have my own unique voice that needed to come through. And um, in the last kind of 15, 20 years, I really um, was deep in, deeply involved with Central Asian dance, Persian and Central Asian dance, as well as the practice of being a dervish and whirling. Um, so Nava dance very much was kind of like a culmination of um, integrating those forms, Central Asian dance, as well as, as my whirling practice with my past as a contemporary dancer and with my path as a spiritual seeker um, and the different ways that that manifests in my life, both um, in Jewish ways as well as dervish ways. And for me, Nava dance was kind of a creation of a movement language that I would say is rooted in Persian and Central Asian dance and aesthetics, very much aesthetics. Yeah, the aesthetics um, and, are very prominent, yes. Yes, yes there's a, a Nava style, Nava dance style. But um, integrated into that really is also the practice of, um, well, coming together as community and sisterhood and that being so integral to dance practice and something that I think all indigenous wisdom traditions really know is that dance is a way that um, women and humans, but I'll focus on women, come together, support one another, um, create experience, transformational spiritual experiences through the body. Um, it's our ancient practice and for me, Nava dance was like a way of reclaiming and coming back into that practice, but in a new way. And um, I have a community here in the Bay Area and we call each other, we're Nava sisters. And through this, this dance practice, that's more than a dance practice. It really has been um, a ritual and spiritual practice as well, the coming together and the layers of ritual that we, we do in our dance practice. Um, we've bonded and become a community and that manifests in many ways of how we show up for one another. Um, so the, the vision of Nava dance actually originally, um, I was a bit grandiose um, and I wanted to create an international dance collective. And I basically created a collective in Israel, Palestine, in Spain, in Italy and in California. So there were these four centers and somehow I thought I was gonna like manage this and make this huge movement. And it actually was amazing. Um, but what I found is that it was very hard to kind of be in four places, yeah. especially as, it's, hard to as it's very hard and I'm a single mother. Um, yeah. So it kind of dissolved, but it didn't completely dissolve. And I'll say that I'm still deeply connected to Nava sisters um, all over the globe and if we came together and did, for example, Dance of Unity, one of my sacred circle dances, it would be so beautiful and so powerful. And there's probably over a hundred women that know the dance well. Um, and I just have this vision of concentric circles. Wow. And I'll share something very personal, which is that I wrote in my will um, that when I pass from this earth, the one important ritual that I want at my funeral ceremony is dance of unity and okay. that all those on planet earth that have learned it, that they will come together and celebrate my life in that way. Mm -hmm. um, so the word Nava uh, actually came to me swimming in the ocean with my beloved sister Meira, uh, Meira Segal. And we were, um, we were swimming in the ocean and I was expressing to her this desire of creating this collective um, with this dance vision and the idea of community and international community and um, 
And Nava came to me and Meir was like, that's beautiful. And one of the reasons that Nava came to me was I really wanted a word that was cross-cultural. Yeah. And um, Nava is shared um, by the Hebrew language, the Arabic language, Turkish and Farsi. And um, in Turkish, it basically means um, song or tune or a melody. Um, and then in, in the Persian uh, music structure, Nava is one of the scales. It's one of the dasga okay. and one of my favorite. And it's one of the, the dasgas that um, often is the music is very um, spiritual. So Nava is, is one of the dasga that is associated with very spiritual devotional music. Um, what else? So in Hebrew, you, you tell us what the translation is. <laughs> Better I think, uh, I, I, think uh, I was trying to think because Nava is is um, graceful, and uh, I think that 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 how would you you would describe a, a woman who is Nava and and not Nava, but you, when we call a woman uh, we we don't call her Nava we call her it's a name it's also a name and we call her Nava. But it's graceful. It's actually graceful. So it's uh, that, and it's you. It's it's the dance. It's it's your form of dance because it is so graceful, and it is so beautiful to look at. I think uh, that th that's one of the things. It's it's a lot about form, and uh, I always look at it and I th I say, okay, there is a lot of form there, but but uh, and I know the deeper meaning that that goes into it. And uh, then I realized that you called it Nava dance, and I said, "Okay, yeah, great. That's uh, that's what um, what it means, and it really is. It uh, it really is. So yeah, it's uh, it's appropriate. I must say. The translation. I like hearing graceful. I I haven't used that word, so that's nice. I've always um used ethereal beauty. So beauty. Ethereal but beauty. Yeah. Just yeah. beauty ethereal beauty like in in tehila like nava tehila like you think of yeah yeah it's a it's an elevated beauty so the, the word nava, i i think about the word the, the sentence from from uh, song of songs and can you translate that no <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it's and it, it, your your beauty yeah your beauty is ethereal or you're so graceful and your eyes are as beautiful as doves so that that's the, the resemble dove doves and i think that, that that's the whole symbolism of 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 a song of songs but yeah that's uh that's another story it's not our story at the moment so um i want to pardon? just just to just to close that so all of the many meanings um just to come back song, melody, tune, um, this higher music, musical form that's very spiritual, the ethereal beauty. And then one more layer that I didn't mention is in Hindi, it means new, something new. Oh. And I felt like Nava, like that was it. Like we had the definition and it covered almost everything um, for, for our dance collective. So, so. Did you know those meanings in, the set, in all different languages before or? Uh... I knew all of them except for the Hindi one. The Hindi okay. one I learned later um, through actually Nava. There's a Nava dance theater um, company. So mm -hmm. I learned it at that point. But mm -hmm. um, I just will just finish by saying that Nava dance um, collective as the international collective, although that vision didn't exactly hold because it's hard to maintain that, we still have a very strong collective here in the Bay Area that we continue um, to come together and even now we're going to prepare um, for no ruse for persian new year we're going to do a installation of sacred dances um outdoors in nature with social distance and all um so i'm i'm my heart is filled with so much um gratitude and love for my sisterhood yeah um great so what well, i'm i'm interested why the central asian i think the whirling practice you wrote something and uh, you were, I think you wrote it on Facebook or somewhere or, or either that or your newsletter uh, what what is the meaning or what does the whirling make you feel and um, I wrote an article about a couple of months ago about the practice of whirling and uh, uh, what three people are trying to to achieve with that and you wrote the same thing 
uh, in a different in different words, but but the same thing. And I said, oh, yeah, that, this is it. But I would like you to to elaborate about that. Definitely. Um, so for me, of all of the movement practices that I have studied my whole life, um, whirling is like coming home, mm -hmm. coming home to the heart. And I'll say that it was my first movement practice as a young child. I would whirl um, ecstatically all the time. Um, and then in my teen years, I would whirl um, at Santana and Grateful Dead concerts. I was one of those people in the back. We were called the spinners and we would just spin the whole concert. So. I was a dervish early on before even knowing what it meant. Um, and then coming into my um, later teens and early 20s, I understood the depth of the practice. And turning always felt like coming home in the sense that when I whirl, all of the, the excess, all of the baggage of the mind, everything that we're like holding on to like suitcases and baggage and these things everything flies away yeah it's like you're unable to hold it um and in that place we become we become essence there's this feeling of being completely um naked and exposed and vulnerable um so so yeah the this coming into just pure essence and light and for me, um, like I mentioned, for me, dance and devotion have been the two strongest themes in my life. And finally, whirling is, is exactly that. It's like movement of the body and pure devotion come together without even like struggle or without like trying. It happens naturally. When I whirl, I come into my prayer. I come into my, my deepest, deepest, deepest heart's intention. And always i i see my whole life cycle i see my birth i see the incredible gift of this life and i also see my death and i see my death in the most beautiful way there's not a feeling of um, fear it's not mm -hmm. morbid it's actually a celebration of of the release life. of this physical <laughs> body um and and uniting with the beloved and that's what sema is is about and when um we, we as semazens we come together on december 17th to to honor our our teacher and guide mevlana jalaluddin mm. rumi um this is the wedding night the night that mevlana passed from this earth he he wedded the beloved and we pray to um to enter this space of of marrying the beloved of allowing our nafs our ego to to die to dissolve and when we whirl especially in sema together with semazens we enter the place of of unity that is that is the you asked about intention and kind of like what are we trying to achieve we are exactly that trying to dissolve our our nafs our ego and come into the experience, not just the knowing, but the actual experience of, of unity, of being completely at one with our, our beloved dervish community and at one with all the universe. Okay. And, and just one last thing, which is that if we look at all of creation, all of the atoms, all of the neutrons and protons, and everything is whirling. Everything. everything so that, that's it. that's what I wrote. That's what I okay. wrote in the article because okay. what I wrote about it's about sacred geometry, and I I wrote about the world the, that everything is whirling. It's you know, the 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 our galaxies are whirling, and and uh, you've got. Um, the air is whirling, actually. I mean, I mean, every, every, it, all the cyclones, the tiny cyclones. When you get rain, it's actually a, a, a big whirl, whirling, uh, um, like like uh, a barometer. Um, and and the the, it's never it's never still, and it's always in a circular motion. So the circular motion is is something that, that is so innate, and usually when you got a whirling motion, the closer you get to the center, like in in a hurricane, and the faster you uh, it gets, and the faster it gets, it creates an emptiness in the middle, and 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 that empty space let and when you whirl, the empty space kind of let your soul you you can you can connect to the divine or you can it creates an empty space and you can connect to, to something higher just because of that empty space that uh, is is created 
around you while you whirl. So I, I get that, that example. If you want, you can go to my website and read it. It's uh, on mandalahealing.dance. So um, I invite you to go there and I'll put in the show notes after, afterwards in the, in the, below the, uh, the video here. So yeah, I love I love this practice, and um, I'm I, I've told how I encountered it the first time in in the movie Baraka. You remember that movie? Have you yes. seen it? I hmm? I have not seen it. I think that Amir wrote music for it, but I I have and, not seen and it. And for Baraka, I don't think so. Amir, uh, I, I think haven't it's... seen the movie. No, the the music is by someone. Um, uh, I, I don't remember. Maybe I don't know. But okay. uh, anyway, I saw it for the first time. I didn't even understand what it was. I just saw it, and I, it, from all the movie, I remembered that part. I seen that movie three times. I went to see it one after the other, like three times in a row. And then a, a couple of years later, I came to Konya, just out of the blue, and I realized what I've seen. I never knew. I didn't know. I, you know, it it was in in the nineties. There was no internet that I could look for. Uh, I I just couldn't. I didn't know where to look for it. And um, and then then I got it. And and uh, it was uh, yeah. And and I still love it. And I did I did a practice of whirling as well once. Uh -huh. And uh, it's an amazing experience. And when I teach. I sometimes will also for a little while, but if you don't practice it, you don't do it well and uh, it needs practice and there's no doubt about it. Yeah, it's interesting how you say that because when I first um, arrived back to Israel-Palestine in my um, like very early 20s or late teens, um, I would turn in concerts like with Amir and mm -hmm. people always came to me like, what was that? That was so strange. Like you turn for like 10 minutes, like how they, like people were really like baffled about it. And now yeah. it's, so, it's so mainstream and known. It's like, oh, she's a dervish or, oh, she's, she's whirling. Um, and I kind of, there's lots of dancers who also whirl, who are not Semizans, who are not dervishes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of entered into the, the, the general dance um, world. Um, which is very interesting. It's beautiful. And um, I always just like to make sure that people also know the spiritual practice, that it's, it is just beautiful to look at. I mean, yeah. a woman in a white dress whirling is, is always gorgeous. And mm -hmm. there's so much past just the physical beauty of the practice. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, um, Miriam, what do you, uh, are you coming to Israel soon? I've been trying to come for a year and because of COVID, I have literally changed my flight and I've like canceled so many times. Yeah. So I don't have a flight because every time I'm coming, it's like, there's like a roadblock. <laughs> um, oh, I remember, did you in the summer, you asked me in the summer. Um, yeah. Really been trying to come for a long time and I miss it so much. I've been dreaming, especially of Sinai, um, which is yeah. like one of my soul places, the Sinai desert. Um, but inshallah, I will be there in my current plan is the middle of June. I will arrive. Oh, great. So great. I should be there for the summer and, um, possibly continuing. So I, I really, I'm ready to return to, um, that side of the world, my other home. Yeah. I remember that you did workshops for my students. Remember that about 15 years ago, I think. I would love to again. Yeah. I don't have any, I, I anymore. I'm not. I think I stopped teaching uh, since the beginning of COVID and uh, I didn't, but I know that many, many dancers would love to have workshops with you. That's for sure. And um, yeah. So do you have any more plans? Like uh, I, I see this vision of yours uh, about the, the Nava dance and, and the collective of women, but I mean, you can build it online. Mm -hmm. Did you think about that? So I have, I do have an online school. It's called Nava Dance. So I have yes. an online school, um, and a lot of people have really enjoyed and shown a lot of gratitude for um, this this school. I'm teaching on Zoom, um, okay. but I have to be totally honest that there's nothing like being in person and nothing like holding hands with beloved sisters and just the physical presence. I really miss it, and I'm yearning to return to it. Um, 
but I do plan to um, continue to teach online and my online school I am slowly expanding. I have only level one so far, but I am just about to release level two as well as teacher's training. So this is very new for me, but I hope to actually um, pass on this tradition of Nava dance and um, certified teachers, people that want to teach um, my form. I'd, I'd love that. I would love to see more teachers uh, teach your form. I think, um, yeah, it's it's I think around, a lot of it, have passed it on, but not in a formal way. So yeah, I mean, usually when you study with someone, you you pass it on, but uh, I think that this this is kind of a form of dance, or or I I don't know what. A, a, a corpus of work that uh, it needs to be it needs to be passed on. I love it, and I think it's immense value to anyone who who is practicing that. And uh, yes, um, I, you know, um, I've I've gone a long way also from from what I was uh, I was dancing, and um, I th I think we all incorporate the spiritual into our work because we feel that there is a need. I mean, modern dance is very form. It, it's it's um, form oriented and uh, in, in many, many, many styles of dance. And um, one of the things of incorporating spiritual work uh, into, into dancing, I think it's uh, many of the oriental dancer, many of, the, uh, of, of my colleagues, um are into it and it's amazing because i don't know if people do it when they come from other dance forms but uh within the oriental dance for some reason people are more and more into uh, into spiritual dance and spiritual uh, influences don't you think I definitely think that there's a movement towards that. And I just, I think that it's really a remembering because it's not like a new thing. When I talk about dance as spiritual practice, I didn't invent it. It's not me no. and it's not like new. It's basically, we're just remembering what dance always has been. Um, and that's been kind of uh, covered up um, yes. by patriarchy and by many influences. So right now there's like this blossoming of sacred dance and blossoming of um, goddess worshiping yeah. um, cultures and um, it's really just I think indigenous wisdom that we are are bringing back um, and Middle Eastern dance like I mean there's so much to talk about but really it was deeply deeply spiritual practice of women and how women supported women in childbirth and through all of the um, kind of transitions in in the woman's life cycle um, and that got a little bit lost with the performance element and Hollywood and whatnot so it's like I think, yes, it's a remembering. People are really wanting to kind of come back to to our roots. <laughs> yeah, we, we forget it. It's only 100 years old, the performing the, the, the performing part of Oriental dance. No, it's not true. There has always been performance there. It's, uh, uh, it's part of the culture, but it's not that only performers danced. It's, it was part of the culture. Women, women used to dance always. Uh, in, and because of the segregation in society, it was always a women's culture. They danced together. They would, uh, they would in all the gatherings and, and uh, many gatherings in, in, in any uh, family event or, or any celebration or, or just, just for fun. Um, w women would dance together, and I think that's um, for me. Uh, it is just dancing together is a spiritual practice. It doesn't really matter what you do, and uh, it's it's really. I mean, I I said that my mission in life is to bring joy, and uh, for a long time I did it through through Oriental dance. I, w I would go and I do workshops with women. And I know that when, when you leave, you, you know that, that the, the shiny eyes that uh, after, after the workshop, they, they just, they, they kind of have an aura around them. They, they're, uh, um, they radiate. And yeah. I love that because I think that women are, are uh, joy agents. They, they, when, when women are joyous, the whole surrounding is joyous. You remember uh, the 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 uh, ballet dance festival in Eilat, 
the International Belly Dance Festival in Eilat. And I said, after I came back from one of them, and there were about 600 women there, and I said, it's 600 women, after three days of dancing together, the amount of joy in the body, in, in their hearts, it radiates so hard. So they come home, each one of them, 600 homes in Israel or around the world, because some of them came from, from other countries, and they kind of, they light a huge torch because it's it's each each one is a candle or, or, or a, a small light but together it's kind of it's lighting a sun yes. and that's the practice of women dancing together that that's my that's what how i see it yes that's beautifully said i love that and i think that really it's so empowering and i can't um, there's just been countless times when I've held immersions um, with groups, large groups of women um, coming together, tears as well as joy. But so, so much of the time, I feel like there's this sense of empowerment of no matter like how hard our life circumstance is, many women came from like recent divorce situations, losing a beloved, so many situations. And there's something so empowering about coming into the practice of the body, of, of moving the body together in unison with other um, beloved sisters and community. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I... and it, 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 does not, it, it does not really matter what is the practice of dance, but it has to have an element of gr a group dancing together. Because yes. uh, it's not um, it's it's not a couple's dance. That's that's different energy, and uh, it's it's not like uh, ballroom dances. That that's a different energy. We're talking about something which is a communal dance together of women, like like dancing in a group, usually in a circle, and that's and and. That's my whole, you know, I, I call my dance style mandala dance because of the circle, because um, it, it embodies that, that the, the circle, the circle, the, the, the women, the circle of women is, is, is what, what's most important because they can dance whatever they want, as long as they are together and, and uh, they, they practice it together. Mm -hmm. So, um, that, I love that, that you're in the circle. The circle is so powerful also for me as a theme in Nava dance and getting out of the mirrors. And we say, let's get off the mirrors. And we yes. always start in class in a circle. And in the circle, all are equal, all are present. Um, and that there's the incredible ability of transformational space and of healing space in that circle uh -huh. where we show up um, with our, our hearts. Yeah, and you know, uh, because of uh, at the moment, because of uh, COVID, uh, we were dancing. We we're dancing flamenco. I'm dancing flamenco, uh, and we are dancing outside and uh, no mirrors. We just, I you know, we put a slab of of, of wood on, on 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 the grass, and and uh, each one of us very a very small one, but. Uh, and because there are no mirrors, it's just us. It's it's we mirror we mirror to each other, uh, who we are and what we are and and the energy, and it's much better in my opinion. And I, I remember there was one year that uh, when I was teaching ten years ago or more, fifteen years ago, um, for some reason they they moved me from the studio. They decided that the Pilates had to be in that studio, and they put me. In, in 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 the uh, in the gym in in the gym room and we had no mirrors for about six months and it was the best time ever because i had huge groups of women and we danced only in a circle That's we danced right. only in a circle and That's i remember it fondly i really love it and i think this is so powerful it is really really powerful mm -hmm. so uh yeah. Okay. Anything else that uh, you want to tell us? Um, maybe I will end with maybe a poem and a prayer. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's wonderful. Great. So, um, in my dance practice, I, I talk a lot about three, um, three temples. Uh, the first temple being this body, 
that our heart lives inside of. This is our first temple that we care for and we tend to. And the second temple is that sacred circle that we just spoke about, the, the temple that we create with our, our community. And then the third temple being the space that we inhabit. And um, I talk about kind of elevating whatever space. So it could be the gym. Um, it could be the park, because that's where we meet and dance now in COVID times. The dance studio, the temple, wherever it is we come physically, we um, that is our third temple. So the inner temple of our body, our community is the second temple, and the third is the physical space that we uplift. Um, so in my dance practice, everything is kind of, um, that, that idea is woven in, is honoring those three temples. And I want to read this poem um, by the mystic and poet Yunus Emre from Turkey. And his poetry is so, so deep and has entered a lot of the lyrics of um, Sufi songs. And what I love about this poem is it speaks to exactly what we've talked about this whole time, is the sacredness of, of being in this body and uplifting um, this lifetime and these moments through this body. So, Yunus writes, we entered the house of realization. We witnessed the body. The whirling skies, the many layered earth, the 70,000 veils we found in the body. The night and the day, the planets, the words inscribed on the holy tablets, the hill that Moses climbed, the temple we observed in the body. Torah, Psalms, Gospel, Quran, what these books have to say, we found in the body. Everybody says these words of Yunus are true. Truth is wherever you want it. We found it all within the body. Ooh. This, this great wisdom teaching of Yunus Emre is integral to, um, to all Dervish and Sufi practice. Um, as we are, our, our sacred practice, our prayer is the movement of the body, yes. is the working, is our zikr, how we, how we move um, with prayer and intention. So um, I want us to just end with a prayer. So bringing the hands to the heart with so much gratitude for this body on loan to us from a source beyond. Gratitude for the breath of life, for the miracle of this moment in time. We give thanks for all of the wisdom of our grandmothers, of all of the women, all of the teachers who have guided us on our journeys. We give so much thanks to all the prophetesses. I wanna send a prayer to all of the women in this world that this be a time of great transformation of great empowerment, that all women find the strength, find their voices, find their embodiment, come into home in their bodies and in their voices. I pray that the men of this world deeply, deeply humble themselves and allow for the spaciousness needed for women to rise up, to speak out, to embody their greatest potential. I pray that men make that space and humble themselves. And I bless us to continue each day of our life with an ever expanding heart that no matter how many times our heart be broken and shattered, that we continue to grow in our capacity to love more deeply to give love and to receive love. May we be channels of divine love each and every day. And let us say, Amen, Amen. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Miriam. Uh, this was really, I think th this is such a special day for us. And I think it couldn't be more appropriate to have someone uh, for for uh, to host someone who is so deeply um, entrenched in, in in female culture, and this is female culture at its best. And I really, I'm really. So
so very grateful for you for uh, sharing with us today what it means to be uh, to be a woman and part of a community and uh, what it means to dance together and um, thank you so much thank you so much for sharing this with us and uh, thank you for whoever is listening to us online or the ones who are going to listen to us later uh, Miriam, how can people find you? Um, lots of ways. Um, my website. Um, I don't know if you can put in. Is there a chat that you can put? I, I, I can, I'll put it where. Yeah. After my website. I'm very responsive to email. I, I dialogue with people on email all around the world. Um, so feel free to reach out by email. And then, of course, Instagram, um, which is Nava Dance. So, or I'll Facebook. put the handle as well. Yeah, I put everything in, in, in the description afterwards uh, when uh, of the video. And uh, so if you want to connect with uh, Miriam, feel free to contact her. And uh, I'm. thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to us. Thank and, you for hosting. Uh, I'll see you next week or the week after and with our next guest and uh, good night to everyone bye miriam and thank you so very much thank you bye bye